I gathered even more interesting details and facts I would consider to be less known. And if you think these aren't that special, then tell me in the comments below of how stupid I am. Oh, and by the way, literally 0% of you are subscribed, so you better subscribe. In the Gauntlet of Shar fight against the Dark Justiciers, you can actually get Balthazar to help you by using the Nox spell on this door. To put an end to your Another thing about this fight is that many of you probably will miss out on the rarest enemy in the game, which in my knowledge can only spawn during this fight. Because usually players will get rid of the Umbral Tremors as fast as possible. But if you don't, and drag this fight out for far too long, a giant Dark Justicier will spawn, called the Justicier Crusader. He has some basic spells and can cast Umbral form, and looks just badass. But the worst part is that he doesn't have any special loot. Remember the dialogue where Halsen says he really likes ducks? Ornaments, utensils... And ducks. I like ducks. It's not a crazy fact, I know. But if you are a special person and read underwear descriptions like me, you can read that Jahiras is actually embroidered with ducks. Coincidence? I think not! This little rat is guilty! In the beginning of the game, always make sure to free and not lobotomize the little brain. The little brain, also called us I think, will eventually return in the end of Act 2, and after freeing it for the second time, become a permanent summon which actually has some good spells in his roster. In Act 3, if you have the Dark Urge Origin and became Baal's Chosen, there is an amusing interaction in the Counting House where you can actually attempt to enter the Vault, which are inherited temple as a property guarantee. It won't work, however, but it's still a fun interaction nonetheless. Ah, then you'll need a Vault Pass. We need only settle the matter of Joaquin's wage. Naturally, we serve the gate's oldest families. Not all have cash in hand. What kind of an establishment would we be if we saw value in coin alone? Could you provide the address of your property? Oh, by the coin maiden. How, um, quaint. And the name of the manor? Is that B-H-A-A-L or B-A-L-L? -L? Silly me, of course. Let me check our records. I'm afraid your estate is not registered on the Sword Coast Customs censuses. Have you been paying your mansion taxes? Or perhaps it isn't valued highly enough to be above the threshold. Then why not bring the gold for the account? Father, not given out your allowance yet? Kindly return with coin in hand. I'm sure that is well within the talents of one of your means. <laughs> I was surprised to learn that not many players know about this shortcut you can use in the final fight against the Absolute. After talking with your allies, instead of heading up to the courtyard, take a right turn where you find a dead winged horror. This mini dungeon containing a very cool death knight makes you skip the massive courtyard fight and takes you straight to the start of the tower. Although I would say the courtyard fight is far more fun as it feels way bigger. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned the interaction between Melly and Barth. Many of you left some insightful comments regarding the multiple other ways the interaction can play out. SD Phantom Gamer commented that you can actually go turn-based and while hidden, pickpocket the locket from Melly and give it to Barth, enabling a new dialogue option. It's just insane how many different ways quests can play out in this game. Hand over my locket. I don't have your ugly locket. I never seen it before. Hand it over or I'll slap the teeth out of your head! <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not even a little bit bad. Can't thank you enough. And you, stay out of my pockets! 
Did you know casting Create Water actually cancels out invisibility? And while we're at gameplay mechanics, did you also know that free spells on blood also gives the same result as using it on water? And that silence can be used as a stealth mechanic, like blowing up the cracked wall on top of the goblin camp without waking up the sleeping goblins. Which I found was a cool way to roleplay as that one character from One Piece. And finally, not really a detail in the game, but a related easter egg I noticed in the D&D Honor Among Thieves movie. At a certain point in the movie, when creating a portal, the gang will use a portrait of Volo to do it. This one was unfortunately a lot shorter than the other parts in my series, as the game has been out for a year now and most hidden details and secrets are more well known, and I only wanted to put in the lesser known stuff I found. I will try to make more related videos while also work on other videos. And if you personally found something cool and hidden, comment down below and I will put it on the next part when I make one. We also reached 2000 subscribers and I wanted to thank you all for the engagement in my videos. Thanks for watching and as always, stay tuned. Dingus.